for Surrey North. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's an honor to speak to uh, the Canada-China Foreign Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement on behalf of my constituents from Surrey North. Mr. Speaker, as, as the official opposition, uh, the NDP, we're very concerned about this agreement, in particular how it was formed, the silence uh, uh, surrounding this uh, uh, agreement, and the potential destruction uh, it could cause for Canadian businesses and for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, I support this motion presented in this House by my honourable colleague from Vancouver Kingsway. Uh, the government should not ratify the Canada-China FIFA and should promptly inform the government of People's Republic of China that it has no intention of doing so. Mr. Speaker, FIFA is a bilateral agreement with China, a major investor in Canada. It is not a free trade agreement. It was signed on September 9, 2012. However, the deal was kept secret till September 26, when it was tabled in this parliament. The agreement was not debated. It was not debated by this parliament, not considered by the committee in the International Trade Committee, which I'm a member of, nor was it voted in any any votes in this House. Although it has been available for ratification since November 1, 2012, the Conservative government has not yet officially committed to this treaty. If this government believes that the agreement is so strong, why are they taking so long to ratify it? Maybe, perhaps, Mr. Speaker, it is because the Conservative government also knows how damaging it could be for Canadians, Canadian businesses, and Canadian economy. As Canadians, we are proud of our country's rich supply of natural resources. The trade of these resources would benefit our economy enormously, and China is an ideal partner for those resources. China has an expanding economy due to its growing middle class. Consequently, they require increased imports of oil, lumber, food, technology, agriculture goods, and other basic necessities. Canada has means to beat this demand, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, Canada and China would be a complementary trading partners, and, and we would want to pursue a, a fair deal with China. However, the Canada-China FIPA deal is in, in its current state, as signed by this government, has not given Canada a fair share. This is, this is not unprecedented, Mr. Speaker, because we are resource-rich. We are in a position to be a major exporting company country. Yet time and time again, we see trade deals signed by this government that sets, up, that sets us up to be exploited. Foremost, Mr. Speaker, the Canada-China Foreign Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement is poorly named. It offers neither promotion nor protection of Canadian trade interests in China. It is biased towards China and Chinese companies. It does not present Canadian companies with the same privileges in the Canadian mar Chinese market as China, Chinese companies have in China, nor as Chinese companies have in Canada. We want to see a growth of Canadian companies in China, but we need a level playing field for our businesses as they expand into global markets. Canadian companies deserve the same promotions and protections that Chinese companies receive in Canada. This is not what the current Canada-China FIPA offers, Mr. Speaker. Not only does this, this treaty expose Canadian business to risk, it plays with the future of Canadian taxpayers. The Canada-China FIPA includes an investor state dispute mechanism designed to allow Chinese companies to literally sue Canada if they do not agree with our federal regulations. These court processes are not located completely outside of legal jurisdiction and rely on Canadian taxpayers funding them. This is not a contingency issue, Mr. Speaker. Canada has already experienced similar problems through NAFTA treaty tribunal bodies. We have been sued numerous times by American companies and we have never won a case. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, Chinese companies already have a track record of using the investor state mechanism to challenge regulations of trading partners. I do not understand why the Conservative government would expose Canadians to such risk when there is a clear record of arbitration. Perhaps the government is also ignoring its most important resource, our Canadian citizens. 
as a government that claims to be physically accountable and competent in trade, why are the Conservatives trying to undermine Canada's potential? Perhaps they don't understand the worth of our resources and how valuable, valuable we are as a trade partner. Perhaps they don't see the potential in Canadian companies. This arro arrogance does not prove them physically capable, capable and the enormous trade deficit speaks to the lack of credibility exchange agreements. In fact, under this government, Canadians have seen our trade deficit grow over the last number of years. In 2012 alone, Mr. Speaker, Canada had a current account deficit of $67 billion, which is an $85 billion drop from $18 billion surplus in 2006, the first year the Conservative government came into, into power. That is their record, Mr. It's, it's been reckless. They, they've shown their incompetence when it comes to negotiating trade agreements, and they've shown their incompetence but if you look at our, our trade deficit over the years, it is over. Under this government, we've had the largest trade deficit ever in Canadian history. And yet, they call themselves competent, physically competent, and then want to tr expand trade. We need trade, a fair trade, trade where Canadian interests are, are also put forward by this government, and that hasn't happened under the Conservatives. In addition to growing current account deficit, the manufacturing deficit has nearly quadrupled since 2006 to just over $1 billion. Good paying jobs have disappeared under this government. The, the secondary, the manufacturing um, deficit, it, it creates a bigger problem because we're, we're ex importing, importing more uh, finished goods from outside of this country rather than manufacturing those uh, in this country. So you can see we're not exporting, exporting as much finished goods that we could be uh, under this government, Mr. Speaker, stacked up against 18 of the most comparable trading nations, including U.S. and Australia, Canada is at the bottom of the list when it comes to trade performance. If Canada has resources and ideal trading partners, why is this deficit growing, Mr. Speaker? It is due to mismanagement of trade and that by this government agreeing to deficient treaties such as FIPA with China and Canada, Mr. Speaker. This government has chosen to undermine democracy through its lack of parliamentary procedure in creating Canada-China FIFA. They have chosen to benefit Chinese corporations rather than supporting Canadian businesses. And they have chosen to expose Canadian taxpayers to huge liabilities in the potential legal arguments through trade tribunals. The Canada the Canada-China trade relations should be foundation on which our future agreements are built. Canada has an opportunity to create a trade deal with China that's mutually beneficial to both of our nations. We should be establishing an agreement with elements of communication and cooperation between our two countries. Two countries, because trade deals are not just about trade anymore, Mr. Speaker. They present unique opportunities for the collaborative collaborative sharing of education, culture, amongst many other things. We need to, Mr. Speaker, we need to inform China about our intentions because we value the country as a trading partner. We must treat them with courtesy and we must pr pursue a trade agreement, tra trade relationship that is respectful both of China and of our country. Mr. Speaker, we want trade agreements uh, Lateral, uh, bilateral agreements like FIPA to be designed to actually serve Canadians and close the embarrassing large deficit that this, under this government we have, have created. We want, to, we want them to reflect the value that we place on Canadian citizens, uh, Canadian businesses and Canadian economy. FIPA as currently it stands is unratifiable both in spirit and in, mis in content, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much.